Okay, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. It is Sunday, May 12th, and this is Eve with Black Yard Gardens. And I kind of did a food forest um, tour or like a grocery store tour of my vegetables the other day. And I kind of wanted to give you an update on my fruit. Before I give you an update on my fruit, I want to show you one of my Mother's Day gifts. This one came from my husband, and um, it is a variegated dogwood. So it's super uh, pretty to me. And I kind of I want to put it over here, over here, with the um, with the Japanese maple. And I'm walking around my truck. I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to put it over here. Somewhere, somewhere in between the Japanese maple and the uh, boxwood. The boxwood needs to get cut down a little bit. It's kind of overgrown, but they're really pretty. And I think that variegated um, dogwood, it grows about four to five feet. So um, I think it'll look really nice um, with those in that area. Now that's my idea. We'll see where it actually ends up. So that was my Mother's Day gift and I want to show you guys that. But otherwise, let me go over what I have that hasn't been planted yet, but they have been kind of up potted. So this right here is a boysenberry. And the boysenberry is a mix between a blackberry, raspberry, and I'm trying to think if it's like a mulberry or something. But it's a it's a mixed kind of berry right here. Then I have um, this one is a Chester a thornless blackberry. We have two honeyberries. Here's a honeyberry and and another honeyberry. So they come in Mr. and Mrs. And um, at least that's what they say. They say the male berry. That one's a berry blue right here. And the Mrs. I'm trying to think of what kind she is but she is a borellus um honeyberry and the honeyberry is supposed to taste like a mix between a little bit more sour but um a mix between a blueberry and a raspberry but they say it might be a little bit more sour than that um i have two grapes here here's one grape and here's the other one of them is, let me see. Oh, that's my elderberry. Okay. Um, this grape is my seeded Niagara grape right here. And this one is my Concord and that's seeded as well. Back here, right here, this is, I'm trying to think of, that's a goji berry. No, that's my that's my Nanking cherry. And this is my, uh, is it goji? Yeah, goji berry, I'm pretty sure. They're like little tiny baby twigs. I don't even, I don't know if they'll make it, but I bought them out of um, tractor trailer supply, these two. But we'll see if they make it. I got a couple maters couple majors up here um right here this one you have to, you're supposed to have two elderberries so if you see here it's coming from down here this is my this is my grape behind, behind it but this is the elderberry and it is starting to leaf out and that one it looks like is the Adams and over here this elderberry is the um John elderberry so you're supposed to have two um, the next thing I want to look at are my other blackberry canes are down here. And I'm trying to think of which I up pot it in here. Oh, hold on. Hold on with me. This is... Oh, the triple crown blackberry. So that one and that one are both triple crown blackberries. And I should have, 
over here is hiding. There's another blackberry right here. And that one is Apache. I think it's called an Apache. And all these are thornless blackberries. So my goal is to have blackberries along the south, along the south side of my house over there on the fence line. The fence isn't up yet, but we did buy it. <sighs> okay, so that's all the blackberries. So I have three different type of blackberry. One boysenberry. The boysenberry has a really pretty flower. So does a blackberry, to be quite honest. I mean, not flower. What am I saying? You know what I mean. Um, leaf. It's a really pretty leaf. Okay. Then we have up potted a plum tree. And this is a Santa Rosa plum. Shout out to uh, Lev Farmer, 73. He talks about the Santa Rosa plum. Or I've heard him say it. So many times when I seen it, I was like, well, let me see if this will work in Ohio. And it looked like it would with what I looked up. So um, it had a really nice um, trunk and all that. It hadn't, it didn't flower or anything like that. But um, yeah, Santa Rosa Plum. I did prune it a little bit to open it up here. I think there's a little bit more pruning that I need to do. But so far, it looks really good. This is a country sweet peach and this is so funny because i got this one from menards right it has a menards tag on it and i think it's supposed to do good in our zone when i looked it up this bad boy flowered and no it didn't just flower this bad boy went ahead and grew a few peaches y'all see them peaches okay let me see I want I want y'all to see what I'm seeing. Okay, yeah. Right here. Y'all see that? And then right back here. Can you can you see that? There's peaches on this bad boy. Not a whole bunch, but we trimmed this one as well. So wow, peaches. I just potted these two this year. So this one to have peaches is crazy to me. So, okay. So those are the um the ones that are new to the garden and that haven't really gone in ground yet. Let me take you to the back. So you can see, um, I don't have any, um, I don't have any fruit over here because my trash cans go over here. I just like this area to look pretty. My um, house got some moss on the side so it's not as pretty as what I like but it looks pretty 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 um, these purple flowers are purple sensation and they're um, an allium flower I love them uh, they're gorgeous and I'm gonna get some more of them um, that wasn't part of the food forest but I love it so <laughs> just letting you know okay this is the only blueberry that I left in the ground. So you can see it coming up right here and then it's flowering right here. So we should have blueberries from that. And then it's also got leaves growing in from where I cut it off down at the bottom. Um, this is another blueberry that I put in a pot and you can see it, it's, it's, let me see if you can see it. Okay, so it has the flowers and you can see that it's growing blueberries. They're actually starting to turn blue. So it looks really good. It looks much better than it did last year. We didn't really, we ate like one or two blueberries. So it's doing much better than what it did last year um, when it's in the pot. And I've heard that from plenty of people that them being in the pot is, um, is more beneficial and it grows better. I'm not sure what this black end is here. If I don't figure it out, I'll probably just cut it off because I don't want it to hurt the rest of the plant. So that looks, the plant in general looks really good and I'm really grateful to have blueberries this year. Um, right here is our raspberry patch. They have uh, little canes coming out here. The, um, I think these are the primal canes, the ones that are first year. And then the floral canes over here the second year canes and if i hopefully i didn't mess those names up but um you can see that they're starting to flower our raspberries so we'll have raspberries soon and then you can see more flowers over here 
And then you can see the rest of the patch is over here. These are all raspberries. So I am soup. When I tell you I'm grateful for that, I am super grateful for a raspberry patch. That's probably one of the most prolific um, fruits that you can put in the ground and then it grows all over the place. You might have to build a little wall around them so they don't, um, the canes will come up every year. Um, when they start leafing out, you'll have um, the roots will go underneath and pop up and create more raspberry plants, which I love because I have the room for it right now. But at some point I'll have to keep them, try to keep them in this area. Um, Cause you can see that they're trying to go over here. But since I have some pots and stuff, it's kind of preventing them from going too far out. Um, in the back here, this is not a fruit, but it is some ch garlic chives. They look so pretty. I just want to give them a little cameo. Do your thing. Okay. So that is the front of our food forest as far as the fruit. This is my baby. Um, and I'm trying to, this is Big Bertha, I'm pretty certain. I think she did, yeah, she's Big Bertha. Um, this is an apple tree and it is a honey crisp apple tree. This, I think, is her third year in the ground. She goes up pretty high. I need to trim her down just a little bit so that she's manageable for the yard. But Big, Big Bertha over here, this baby over here actually got fruit on it. So let's see if you can see. Can you see that? Let's see, there you go. You can see. And then there's more over here. So, so far, the, the most that I've gotten from this tree is, um, is one apple. I don't think it was last year. I think it was a year before. So her, she's got more of an open, um, a open center. At least that's what I was going for. Now, I trim her myself, and she needs more trimming. I just, I'm scared to do too much, but it's my beginner status. So just be patient with me, and I'll keep going with her. Um, right here, she's on tilt. And this is um, our peach tree, Bumadine. And Bumadine is is no joke. I one. I need to kind of, she's so, she's so tilt. Look at the, here goes the apple. And here goes Bumadine, my peach tree. This is a Red Haven. Um, the one in the front was again, a country sweet. And this is a Red Haven um, peach tree. So yeah, let me show you the peaches. Let me get you in there. Can you see those? Yeah, peach. Um, let me see if I turn right here, you can see peach. Yeah, right here. And um, they're all over the place. And let me see. They kind of, when they first start um, peaching, like the peaches come out, they, um, they look kind of green. So it's harder to, to see them. But um, yeah, it is starting to peach up. And I can see them all the way up here. So she's... She's not as tall as the apple tree, but she's been in the ground for, um, I want to say two or three years as well. I can't, I have to look at it, but I want to say she's been, this is her third year in the ground because they're, they have a nice little stalks or little root, um, trunks. So if we turn from there, look at the pretty flower. Um, if we turn from there, let's go over some more fruit. We have a peach sorbet in the, um, I actually showed you this one. We have a peach sorbet in the wine barrel right here. So my peach sorbet is another blueberry plant and you can see I'm starting to turn blue, but you can see all the flowers on it. Now, let me just tell you something. This bad boy got maybe two or three um, blueberries on it last year because it was in the ground and my ground is clay soil and it was um suffocating it so now i took it out i'm fertilizing it i'm it's getting watered it's going it, it does so much better in container than it does uh in the ground for me and then these this is um chocolate mint 
Mm, smells so good. Smell of vision. Smells so good. All right. And so that is, let me see, the back of the fruit. Let me see where I can take you. Okay. Over here, I haven't named her yet because she is a multi grafted um, apple tree. And when I, <laughs> Ooh, a bug flew in my throat. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, when I say she is a multi -graf grafted apple tree, she got so many flowers this year. I don't even, let me think. She got so many flowers. There's so many apples. Let's see if I can just kind of give you. There goes one group of apples. There's apples all over the place. Um, and then my daughter was out looking and she said, mom, did you see the ones that are larger? So let's, uh, I'm trying to think of, I think there's John of Gold in there. There's Golden Delicious. Um, I want to say it has about five different kinds of apples, but let me try to get you in so you can see a couple of them. Okay, stepping in. See that right there? Oh, let's see if I can get you another view. Oh, here goes a really nice looking green one. See that one right there? See these right here? Right down here. They're beautiful. And um, I have not sprayed my apple tree. I am thinking about putting these in little kind of like trying to protect them like individually i've seen like permaculture um, gardens do that the ones that don't want to spray i also am trying to water and keep her healthy right under you can see some lettuce which i think is so cool it seeded itself it's so cool um but yeah she's a pretty girl and she goes up pretty high and i need to to open her up a little bit and take some of the limbs off but again still pretty new at it so over here we have a fuji apple and then i just trimmed up this fuji apple because this was so tall it actually started flowering out on me and i actually think it started getting fruit and what happened is it started to take a real big tilt because um the wind so i had to to trim her and I kept her in this shape it's like she's got a funny shape so anyways so that's where we are with our fruit forest for the most part um she is a cherry tree she is new to the garden she just got planted at the beginning of this season but just so you know she out here in these streets because this bad boy not only got um a couple of cherries one of them is has turned color like it's red there goes the green one there goes the red one so i thought that was super cool and i'm gonna make sure because this leaf looks sad so i want to take it off okay and that one did too making sure there's not leaf curl on my i gotta keep an eye because um my peach tree it had a little bit of that leaf curl and I tried to just cut off the area that I seen it on. Anyway, she looks really good. All right, let's take you around the corner and we have a little bit more fruit in. Over here is where the fence line would be, over here. And I borrow this landscaping, but this is my neighbor's. It's really pretty. All right, now, because I compost in here, we have um, some spaghetti squash growing up, but really it is a bed of raspberries. And under here, you'll see another raspberry cane. And that one's actually growing up as well. So there goes another little raspberry cane right here. Here's the original cane on this one. Let me see, oops, there you go. There's the original cane and then you'll see this raspberry corn up here. 
So I'm, I'm gonna clean this out and get some of the squash out of there. But um, yeah. Over here, we got a few weeds. We got some chamomile, but we also got some strawberry flowers. And this is my son David's uh, strawberry patch. We also got some squash growing up over here. Not quite sure which squash is in here, but since I compost in here, I'll just clip these off unless I want to keep them. There's some that I might want to keep, so. But these are strawberries. So we got it in a wine barrel right here. So yeah, oh, you know what? I forgot to show you the, um, the new addition that I already put in. Now, I'm still trying to find an area for my pink currants, because I did er order some pink champagne currants, but my red currant, I did put, I did put it in the ground let me show you where i put it do you see her she can get i think four to five feet and she can get pretty wide too i'm gonna have to keep her trimmed but uh this is a current plant and it will have currants on there and this is my mailbox garden one of my little flowers didn't make it but mostly everything else is doing really good so yeah, it's my mailbox garden. She's hiding right back there. It's a pink, uh, not a pink currant. That's the red currant right there. And it's Rovada. I think it's called a current Rovada. If anybody knows anything about the Rovada current. So I am pretty excited about our fruit food forest. I hope um, this is, encourages anybody that's within city limits and that only has around a quarter of an acre but um yeah we have i don't know how, maybe like 14 different berries um that we're growing and just pretty excited about it <laughs>